Hello, I'm Mimi, and today I'm really excited because I'm finally sharing my very own brush pack with the world. So to celebrate, I'm going to show you how I create textured illustrations using digital brushes and also texture overlays. I'm going to be showing you a demonstration of a simple drawing in both Procreate and then in Photoshop with my own brushes specifically. But of course you don't need my brushes to do a similar thing. If you already have some texture brushes or if you've made your own, then you can definitely use those. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that later. So I love adding texture to my illustrations and although it's not for everyone's style, I think it's such a great way of elevating your artwork. I also love sharing what I know about being an artist, but it's always been a bit tricky to do texture tutorials because some of you use Photoshop and some of you use Procreate or other programs. So I really wanted to make some texture brushes that can be used in both Photoshop and in Procreate to make it easier for me to share how I create my art with the majority of you. I still haven't tested them in other programs, but hopefully I can do that soon. It's taken me far longer than I would like to admit to create this brush pack for both Photoshop and for Procreate, but at last I now have seven brushes that I use for all of my illustrations. And then I also have four texture overlays that I made that I'll show you how to use as well. I like to keep things pretty simple so I don't use too many brushes because otherwise I get overwhelmed with choice and these really are all I need 99% of the time. So let's draw a little something in Procreate first and then I'll do the same thing in Photoshop to show you how I use these texture brushes and also the texture overlays. Feel free to jump through the video to the software that suits you best. So let's start with Procreate and first we need to import the brushes which is super simple in Procreate. You just go to the brush tab, click on the plus icon and go import up the top right. Then you just find where you've downloaded the brushes to, I've got mine here and it'll import into Procreate. So I've got seven brushes. Two of them are pretty clean and simple that I use for a lot of sketching and color blocking. Then three are a little bit more textured. And then I've got two big broad texture brushes. These are pretty much all the brushes that I use because like I was saying, I get a bit overwhelmed when I have loads and loads of brushes to choose from. So I like keeping my brush options pretty simple. Okay, so let's have a look at what the brushes are. So I've got a clean and simple brush, which is kind of exactly how it sounds. It's just a clean, simple brush. It's got a little bit of texture in it that'll come through, but nothing too fancy. And then I've got a scruffy edge brush, which is similar, but with a much rougher edge to it. Then I have a marker pen brush, which has a lot more variation in the opacity and the flow, a lot more like a natural pen or natural brush would. Then I have a smooth shading brush, which is quite smooth with a bit of texture and it has a variable opacity, so it's nice for shading. I have a medium texture, which is also exactly how it sounds, and that's just got a nice paper texture running through it. And then I have a chunkier, broader version of that, which is the texture fill, and I use that for filling in large areas of texture. And lastly, I have a sprinkles brush, which has a speckled effect to it. So those are my seven brushes, and let's illustrate something with them. So I want to take you through a quick walkthrough of how I would actually use these brushes in an illustration because it's very easy to get a brush set and not know how to actually get the effects you want with them. So the clean and simple brush is what I use to begin with for sketching or for basic color blocking of my main shapes because it's pretty smooth. And I want to draw a flower today so I'll start with a stem and leaves. Let's add a little flower head to this and I'll use the scruffy edge brush to show you how much rougher the texture looks. I don't actually use this scruffy edge brush as much as I use the clean and simple one, but it's quite nice for creating edges that aren't so smooth sometimes. You can see how much rougher the edge of the flower head is compared to the leaves and so it just kind of depends how much texture you want in your illustration. So now for the important part, to me at least, is adding details and texture. So for the details, I like to either use the marker pen or the smoother shading brush because they're both fairly clean and smooth, but both have some texture to them. 
So let's add some detail to the leaves with the marker pen brush and I like to add a new layer and then in a lighter colour I go over these leaves and add a leaf pattern to them. And to avoid things going over the edge like this does here, I make it a clipping mask by clicking on the layer thumbnail in the layers panel and selecting clipping mask. Then I can draw over the edge of my shape and it will always be clipped to the leaves. Now I like that this brush has a variable opacity and thickness so the harder I press with my brush the darker and thicker the stroke will be and the less I press the lighter and thinner it will be which is useful for getting a more natural looking effect. For shading I like to use a combination of smooth and textured brushes so I can start with this smooth shading brush and I use this for areas where I want the sharpest shadows to be. I add all of my shading as new layers and they'll all be set as clipping masks with a multiply blend mode using the same colour as the object that I'm shading. Multiply blend mode will make the new colour layer darker and more saturated than what's below it, so it's great for shading. Then I like to add some texture and for that I have a medium texture brush and a broader texture fill brush. I'll start with the medium texture brush and use this mostly for edges or for down the middle of leaves. The texture fill brush will give you a nice broad texture that you can use to fill in a larger area with texture. And you can go over some of the areas a bit more to make it a bit more filled in as well. I really like to layer up my textures with some areas that are smooth and quite filled in and some areas that show much more texture coming through. And then the sprinkles brush I like to use around the edges and for darker areas of shading and it just gives a nice speckled effect. Sometimes I also use it in the background to highlight an object or in grass and bushes and things like that. So those are really all of the brushes that I use and I can just add more definition as I need to with the finer brushes and more texture where I need to with the more heavily textured brushes. I almost always put some kind of sparkles on my illustration and for that I will either use the clean and simple brush or the marker pen brush. I think the marker pen is my favourite brush for adding details so it's one that I use a lot. Now another way you can add texture is with texture overlays. So I have a few of my own that I've made by painting on paper and scanning them into my computer. And you can just bring this in over a whole illustration or just parts of it to add more texture. To use these textures or something similar of your own, click on the spanner in the top left and select add and then insert a file. Find where the texture is on your device and select it and it'll add it to your Procreate canvas where you can resize it if you want to. It obviously doesn't look like much on its own, but that's why we're going to change the blend mode to apply it to our illustration. Go to your layers panel and make sure the texture is above anything you'd like it applied to. And then click on the little end to open the opacity and blend mode panel. And I usually select either overlay or soft light, but you can play around with different blend modes to see the effects they'll have. It'll be way too strong to begin with, but just reduce the opacity with the slider until you get a level of texture that feels nice for your illustration. For me, that's usually between 10 and 30% if I'm using overlay blend mode. It gives a subtle texture, but can make all the difference to how your illustration looks overall. And you can also use these textures for just one part of your illustration by moving it above the layer you want it applied to and then making it a clipping mask. Sometimes I'll add a couple of different textures to different parts of my illustration and see how that feels. And so that's how I use my brushes and create textured illustrations in Procreate. If you're wanting to learn more about brushes and digital art after you've watched this video, then I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. I'm a big fan of their online learning community that has an incredible range of classes for creatives like us to learn new skills or level up the things we already know. So if you're looking to improve your art skills, then they have some really nice classes on Procreate, Photoshop, and also lots of traditional mediums too. For a proper deep dive into the world of textures in Procreate, then Christina Hultkrantz has a great class called Digital Texture 101, Get to Know Your Procreate Brushes, which is all about finding digital brushes that you like and defining your texture style, which is really useful if you're wanting to use more texture but aren't sure where to start.
I honestly think that Skillshare is such a great resource to invest in if you're looking to improve your digital art skills. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can try it out for yourself. Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. So now let me show you the same drawing process as before, but in Photoshop. To import brushes, all you need to do is go to your brushes panel and click on the menu in the top right, and then select import brushes and find the .abr file on your computer. So now you've got my brush pack and there are seven brushes in here that pretty much cover everything I need to illustrate in my style. Two of them are pretty clean and simple that I use for a lot of sketching and color blocking. Three are a little bit more textured. And then I've got two big broad texture brushes. These are pretty much all the brushes that I use because like I was saying, I get a bit overwhelmed when I have loads and loads of brushes to choose from. So I like keeping my brush options pretty simple. Okay, so let's have a look at what the brushes are. So I've got a clean and simple brush, which is kind of exactly how it sounds. It's just a clean, simple brush. It's got a little bit of texture to it that'll come through, but nothing too fancy. And then I've got a scruffy edge brush, which is similar, but with a much rougher edge to it. Then I have a marker pen brush, which has a lot more variation in the opacity and the flow, a lot more like a natural pen or a natural brush would. Then I have a smooth shading brush, which is quite smooth with a bit of texture and a variable opacity, so it's nice for shading. I have a medium texture, which is also exactly how it sounds, and that's got a nice paper texture running through it. And then I have a chunkier, broader version of that, which is the texture fill, and I use that for filling in large areas with texture. And lastly, I have a sprinkles brush, which is a bit of fun and has a speckled effect to it. So those are my seven brushes, and now let's illustrate something with them. I'm going to draw a little flower and the clean and simple brush is what I typically use to begin with because I use it for sketching or blocking out my main shapes before I add texture to them. I like it because it's quite smooth but has a bit of imperfection and texture coming through. So let's add a little flower head to this stem and I'll use the scruffy edge brush to show you how the rougher texture looks. I don't use the scruffy edge brush as much as I do the clean and simple one, but it's quite nice sometimes when you want a bit more texture to your shapes. So I'll color that in and you can see how much rougher the edge of the flower head is compared to the leaves. So now for the important part to me at least is adding details and texture. So for the details, I like to either use the marker pen or the smooth shading brush because they're both fairly clean and smooth, but still have some texture. So let's add some detail to the leaves with the marker pen brush. And I like to add a new layer and in a lighter color, I go over the leaves and add a leaf pattern to them. And to avoid things going over the edge like they do at the moment, I make that layer a clipping mask, which I do by right clicking on the layer and selecting create clipping mask. And then I can draw over the edge of my shape and it'll be clipped to the leaves. I like that this brush has a variable opacity and thickness to it. So the harder I press with my brush, the darker and thicker the stroke will be. And the less I press, the lighter and thinner it will be, which is useful for getting a more natural looking effect. For shading, I use a combination of smooth and textured brushes. So I normally start with the smooth shading brush and I use this for areas where I want the sharpest shadows to be. I add all of my shading as new layers and they'll all be set as clipping masks with a multiply blend mode using the same color as the object I'm shading. Multiply blend mode will make the new color layer darker and more saturated than what's below it. Then I like to add some texture and for that I have a medium texture brush and also a broader texture fill brush. I'll start with the medium texture brush and I use this a lot around the edges of shapes and anywhere that I want some more shading. The thing that I really like about Photoshop is that it's really easy to adjust the flow of your brush up along the top tool panel. So if you want to see a bit more of the texture coming through, then you can reduce the flow of the brush and have the control you want over what the texture looks like. I change the flow of my brushes all the time to adjust them to the situation. So don't feel like you need to keep the flow and opacity at the default. 
Now the texture fill brush will give you a nice broad texture that you can use to fill in larger areas and it isn't very strong but you can go over some areas to make it a bit more filled in. I really like to layer up my textures with some areas that are smooth and more filled in and some areas that show a lot more of the texture coming through. And then the sprinkles brush I like to use around the edges or for darker areas of shading and it just gives a fun speckled effect. Sometimes I also use it in the background to highlight an object or in the grass or bushes. So those are really all of the brushes that I use and I can just add more definition to my illustration as I need to with the finer brushes and more texture where I need to with the more heavily textured brushes. I also pretty much always put some kind of sparkles on my illustration and for that I usually use the marker pen brush which is my favourite one for adding details. Now another way you can add texture is with a texture overlay. So I have a few of my own that I've made by painting on paper and then scanning them into my computer and you can just bring this in over a whole illustration or just parts of it to add more texture. I usually do this by just selecting the top layer of my illustration and then dragging and dropping my texture from a folder on my computer straight on top of my canvas. Or you can also click on file place embedded. You can resize it at this stage if you like and then we want to change the blend mode to apply this texture to our art. Click on the blend mode drop down menu above your layers and usually I select either overlay or soft light as my blend mode for this. The texture will be way too strong to begin with so bring down the opacity to around 10 to 30% until you get the effect that you want. You can also use these textures for just one part of your illustration by moving it above the layer you want it applied to and then making it a clipping mask. And I sometimes will use a couple of different texture overlays for different parts of my illustrations. And so that's how I create textured illustrations in Adobe Photoshop. So you can get these texture brushes and overlays right now over on my Etsy shop. There's a brush pack file for Photoshop and a separate one for Procreate, but they're the same brushes or at least as similar as I could make them across the two programs. Have a play around with adding textures to your illustrations because it's a really nice way to liven them up. And I find that if I have an illustration that feels a little bit flat or unfinished, that often adding some texture can be just the thing it needs to jazz it up. If you try these textures for yourself, I'd love to know what you think, so comment below if you give them a go. Also, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons who had early access to these brushes and helped me test them out. The brushes aren't on Patreon anymore, but it was lovely to be able to do some testing with the community. Thanks so much for watching this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already for more art videos. See you in the next one. Bye bye.